All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. I think I have COVID again, but I'll talk about that at the end of the discussion. Now, the big discussion today is unvaccinated versus vaccinated and what? The protection from, from severe disease and reinfection from a previous infection versus protection from severe disease or in an infection by vaccination. So that is the comparison. This is the promise I had made when I did the last study from Qatar about the unvaccinated cohort and the reinfection severity and the incidence in them. Uh, I had said if we had 10,000 likes, I would do this discussion. 10,000 likes were actually two days ago, but I had two guests already lined up. So here we are. There are some questions that would be left and we would discuss them later on. But I think this is a very interesting study. You would like it. So here, this is drbean.com. This actually is a link to drbean.com videos, about 900 videos, which are at a very, very low price. And this is a one-time price of $67. So take advantage of this. And uh, if you would like to have access to those other medical lectures too. With that, here is the uh, study that I discussed last week. This is the study that I'm going to discuss, which is in vaccinated. And we'll go from there. Then there are tons of other studies here that are for reference material. You can see them in the um, links are in the description. So let's start. Here is once again, reminder. So these are the gifts from for humanity, they are continuing. The reminder, what are we going to talk about? We are going to talk about protection offered by a vaccine for an infection or for the severity of infection. That is one. And the protection is duration of protection. How long can a vaccine protect you from getting COVID? And if you do get COVID, how much protection does it offer from severe COVID? That is from a vaccine. Now, if you, instead of vaccine, got infected or had been infected in the past, what is the protection? How long will you not get the next infection? And what is the severity if you get the infection? Now, we are seeing nowadays with Omicron, we are getting infection almost on a monthly basis till this variant mutates enough to become even more friendly. I think it's just going to keep doing that. So let's look at this data. This is also a Katri cohort. So now we are comparing apples to apples, meaning this whole data, vaccinated or unvaccinated, it is from Qatar. So we are not comparing two other, two different demographics. It is Qatar, similar population, similar mandates, similar operating procedures, and so on. So let's start. Very simple, although this graph looks interesting, but um, let me walk you through this. First of all, on the left side here, this is the percent effectiveness. The horizontal axis or x-axis is number of months after an event, for example, an infection or vaccine. I have not plotted first dose of the vaccine. It's useless to plot that. I have plotted second dose and third dose and a previous infection. These are the three parameters that are here. If I give you the summary of this before I walk you through this, do you know the summary is if somebody has two dose vaccines, the what we call primary series, if somebody has the primary series of Pfizer or Moderna, within three months, their efficacy for symptomatic COVID Within three months, so duration is important in discussion today. Within three months, the effectiveness goes below 10%. In case of Moderna, 
within three months, we're talking about Qatar, within three months, the effectiveness goes to a point where data is uncertain. It becomes insignificant. So you get the second dose. There is some protection. Within three months, you don't even know what protection is left. If you have Pfizer, then within three months, the protection drops down to 10%. And within another three months, the protection actually becomes negative. That is, unvaccinated are better protected during that time than the vaccinated. This is the sixth month, seven month onwards. Now, if somebody gets a booster, that is the third dose, then they go from wherever they are when they get the booster, 10% or minus 17%, wherever is the effectiveness. From there, they jump to about 60%. That's a big jump. But check this out, within one month, effectiveness drops by 20% down to 40 and that trend continues and within two to three months they are back to zero. This is for the symptomatic COVID, this is not for the severe, severe is the next slide. So take away for vaccinated individuals, which includes me, and I have now the third infection as well. So I am hybrid. Hybrid is not here. It is either vaccinated or unvaccinated data here. Maybe when I get another 10,000 and this one, I'll do a hybrid too. But th check this out. Vaccinated, primary series, protection from symptomatic COVID down to nothing within four or five months. After booster, protection rises and then drops down again within three months. So every three months, we need something if we want to avoid symptomatic infection. So you might be saying right now, you know what? We should still get the vaccine because it would help with the long COVID. Vaccine. So this is not Qatari data. This is U.S. data now. And of course, U.S. is a different demographic, but I'm just giving you an idea. The studies from U.S. Veterans Affairs show that the vaccine's effectiveness to reduce the risk of long COVID is only 15%. It reduces the risk by 15%, not the long COVID by 15%, meaning long COVID to 15%. It reduces that risk by 15%. What does that mean? If 100 people were going to get long COVID, then 15 people would be less likely to have long COVID. So not a very great outcome. Again, even one case matters. So vaccine takeaway. So hold that in your mind. I'm going to show it to you over here. So follow me on this part here. This is the first, sorry, second dose. Here, 46.6% is the effectiveness after the second dose of Pfizer. 46.6% effectiveness after the second dose of Pfizer within two to three months, within one to three months, actually. Then it starts declining. And within three months, gets down to 8.8% effectiveness. It goes below 10%. And it continues to decline. So by after the sixth month, it reaches minus 17.8. There should be a point here. 0.8. And if you get the booster, it jumps from here to 59.9% for one month. For one month. Then it drops down to 40.5 and then it continues to drop down with a similar rate. I would suspect down to 10% again within three months. I would actually think it would be dropping faster than that. So good. What is the takeaway? If we are vaccinated 
every three months our efficacy is almost down to nothing or zero, 10. And we just have to keep having boosters every, 10, uh, every three, four months. If a person who is at risk, if, if, if a person has comorbidities, if they have immune system issues, it is totally valid to look for a vaccine. But here is the data from Qatar. Now, I'm going to compare the data to the unvaccinated study that we did last week. Now, that study was preprint. This study, this data that I just showed you, this is a published study, accepted published study. Now, let's go back to preprint for a second, just so we can do a complete comparison. In that preprint, the researchers said there are two ways to look at the information. Before Omicron, somebody who got infected, so that means Delta or other variants, then they are reinfected in Omicron time. And what is the protection offered by an infection with Delta from Omicron? Or previous infection with Delta and, and protection for Delta, right? So pre-Omicron to pre-Omicron protection and pre-Omicron to Omicron protection. These are the two protection data they have. So let's first look at pre-Omicron to pre-Omicron, which is kind of a useless information now because we are not we are not in Delta era anymore. But just check this out for the sake of understanding how infection and reinfection were working. So here, Look at this black dot. This is the first infection with pre omicron variant. That infection incorporated from the day it occurred, it incorporated 88% or I think 84.5% effectiveness or protection. Compare that to vaccine on the after the second dose, 46.6%. And if you look at Moderna, that was even th lower, 35%. And first Delta infection, 80% or more, then actually protection started increasing. And by seventh month, protection went above 90%. Then by 15th month, we are talking years now. With the vaccine, we were talking every three months. Now we are talking years. By 15th month, it dropped to 70%. We were talking about vaccine within three months going down to below 10. Here, 15 months later, still 70%. And then 30, about 22 months, 50%. We're talking years, almost two years later. And almost three years later, this is of course a projection, three years later, or about 32 months later, the effectiveness went down to 10%. Three years later. Remember when we used to discuss these studies in the beginning, and I used to say that SARS-CoV-1 protection continued for three years? This is that here. I was not wrong. Why was I not wrong? Because I was not reading tea leaves, I was reading books. Okay, so here, after 32 months, projection is down to 10%. This is delta to delta or alpha to delta or beta to delta. So previous variants, not much interest, but the strength of protection is very interesting. Now let's look at the important one. And that is somebody who got infected previously, let's say with delta. And now how are they doing in alpha? Oh, I'm saying alpha, Omicron. That is this green line, this line. First infection with Delta and protection against Omicron starts at 35%, so low. But sustains and drops down to lesser than 10 after one year, 15 months. I'll give you a comparative example. Moderna starts at the same number, 35, after the two doses. 
and drops down to uncertain data points within three months. Within three months becomes uncertain. Here it starts, the previous infection with Delta starts against Omicron at 35, 36 and continues staying and drops down to 10 after 15 months. So with the infections, we are talking years. With the vaccine, we are talking quarters, one quarter, two quarter, three quarters, and so on. So that is the comparison of symptomatic COVID. You could say, and I would join you in saying, who cares for the symptomatic COVID now because it is just occurring everywhere all the time. The only additional number would be long COVID, every reinfection. According to US cohort, Veterans Affairs study said every reinfection is severe. I don't believe in that. I think they missed the whole asymptomatic and mildly symptomatic people staying at home. They just missed the whole cohort. But long COVID is an example. But as I said before, vaccine only offers a reduction in long COVID risk by 15%. So good, there is a risk reduction, but really minute. Okay, continuing. I want to re review these two data points before we go to severe. So I'm going to put severe here and then go and review these two, these two points. First of all, study figure number three in this study that I'm discussing, the vaccinated individual study. They have very good data points over here. So I would actually request you to look at them. Let's go to figure three. This is a, I believe this is their figure three. Right? So this is figure three. Really interesting to see. Start from here, the left side. I showed you um, the Moderna, sorry, Pfizer. Look at the numbers here. The blue one is against BA1 and red one is against BA2. So Pfizer against, let's say, BA1 started from 46, dropped down to 8.8 .8 within three months and then in negative range. Look at the Moderna here. Moderna starting at 71, dropping to 31 and then minus 10 within seven months. Moderna against Omicron. Moderna against Omicron, valid for today's discussion, starts at 35.9. Moderna two-dose primary series, protection against Omicron, 35.9% effectiveness. Look at three months later. Look at this bar here. 9.9 .9 crossing unity, insignificant data. Within three months, it's gone for BO2. It's, it's, the data is gone here. Do you see that it is crossing the, this unity line? And then within seven months, it is minus 20. And that is not insignificant because it doesn't cross the unity. It is correct number minus 20. If I was in healthcare leadership, I would have asked the healthcare companies to say, go redesign your vaccine. Giving this vaccine again and again to population is going to cause more harm now because the benefit is really low. That means frequency of administering the vaccine will need to be higher. And that high frequency has a higher chance of causing damage as well. So this is one diagram, very important. This is the study. Now, the second thing I wanted to also show here, this is that preprint. And I just showed you those numbers, but if you wanted to just glance at it, you can pause here and just read these numbers and how their efficacy is. Now let's go back to here. I think a more reasonable and more interesting thing to look at is the severity. Why at least here, the, the cool beans we here have always talked about a vaccine cannot stop from an infection. 
it was the big wigs the so called experts the leaders who had made promises that the vaccine would stop from the infection and now they are standing with an egg on their face and now with that one egg on their face or multiple eggs on their face they are making a new promise that go get a vaccine because vaccine would help you against long covid so let me actually show you that as well long covid risk falls only slightly after vaccination huge study shows this is 25 may and look at the study vaccination against sars cov 2 lowers the risk of long covid after infection by only about 15% according to a study of more than 13 million people long covid illness that persists for weeks or months after infection with sars cov 2 has proved difficult to study not least because the array of symptoms make it hard to define even finding out even finding out how common it is has been challenging some studies have suggested that it occurs in as many as 30% of people infected with the virus but in november study of about 4.5 million people treated at us department of, of veterans affair hospital suggests that number is 7% overall and lower than that for those who were not hospitalized and then the vaccine will come and reduce that further by 15% so 15% of 7% so back here they are making this comment again and again now to say please have vaccine because it would help against long covid again it's not about vaccine it's about the wrong promises and using the wrong product okay so if i was in, in the leadership at this time i would have said go make another design go fix this do not put people at risk and correctly present the data all right now severe cases this is an important one unvaccinated who got infected in their second infection or reinfection how severe how much protection the previous infection is providing you would be amazed at this 97.3% protection from severe reinfection irrespective of variant and no evidence of winning I remember then when I discussed this last time, many people tweeted and said, "Your evidence is wrong. I have severe protection. I'm sitting here at home with coughing and phlegm. That's not severe infection. Uh, I feel bad and I'm sorry and I pray for you and for your health and recovery. But that's not severe infection. Severe infection's definition is that you're in the hospital, probably on the edge of going to a ventilator or, or using oxygen." so severe reinfection protection from severe reinfection of a previous infection is 97.3% regardless of the variant type and it does not appear to be waning and this is where the authors again this is kather study authors had said based on this it looks like the virus is becoming more like other human corona viruses because they behave this way they cause more reinfections they cause reinfection every year but they do not cause severe outcomes now vaccinated individuals and in reinfection from severe just two doses the primary series 70 to 80% lesser than a previous infection this used to be so much of a a fight i remember people quarreling and and sending me threats asking that they'll come over to my home and straighten me out because they thought vaccines were performing better than the reinfection again it is understandable who should wait for getting an infection that that can be disastrous but if somebody has an infection they have a protection 97.3% from severe outcome compared to two dose vaccine 70 to 80% and if there is a booster then it goes to more than 90% so three doses at least bring it more than 90% where one infection has brought it more than 97% so the the study that i am discussing at this time 
the Qatar study, they say in their conclusion, it seems like vaccine offered protection is short lived for symptomatic infection, but strong and durable for severe. And I would be fine with that. Although their, uh, their measurement of durability is six months. The measurement of durability in the um, unvaccinated study is 15 months and then they projected towards more than that. So this is the data. If I just had to summarize it in two sentences, if somebody got previously infected, they really have less to worry about reinfection. Their COVID chances are 15% more than vaccinated. If somebody has vaccination, they need to figure out every three months, do I need to get a booster or just wait for it that, hey, it is going to protect me from re uh, severe outcomes. The questions that are still not answered. Number one, protection from severity from Omicron to Omicron. I got Omicron today. If I get Omicron two weeks later, according to Veterans Affairs study, it will keep becoming severe. What is the right thing? That data is not there. Anecdotes are there. Data is not there. And I don't think that they'll be able to collect that data because when somebody is sick at home, they are not reporting that they're sick. They're not putting that data out there. They're not getting tested and putting that test out there. Then this is a very important one, which I actually wanted to look into more in detail. And I didn't have data. Do you know what this is? If you are unvaccinated and you have never been infected, at least you do not know that you were infected, what will happen if you get first infection? Because there is no protection by a vaccine or there is no protection from a previous infection. What will happen in that case? That is the data that is missing. And I need to actually work on that data to figure out what is the answer for this one. My suspicion. Now, so this is my, my opinion part, my thinking part, and you can totally throw it away and say useless. And that is people who were who got entangled, who got infected in the first waves of the virus, they unfortunately, if they were at risk, they died. Or they became infected and recovered. Or they became vaccinated. So the cohort that is now left unvaccinated, majority of that I would consider are those who believe they are happy and healthy, who believe they're youngsters, who believe they're not at risk, or their lifestyles, or whatever else. Meaning it seems to be that that cohort is different from the cohort two years ago. So two years ago, severity data is not applicable to the current unvaccinated and infection-naive individuals. So what is that data? I do not know. And I could not find it. And I think I have to, maybe I have to spend this weekend to find that. So this is an open question. And how long does vaccines or do vaccines protection, how long vaccines protection for severe COVID last? So this does is missing here, uh, not needed here. So how long will the protection last? So we know from SARS-CoV-1 that the protection lasts for three years. We know from the Qatar study that after the infection, the protection lasts for about three years or maybe 15 months if it is Omicron, Delta to Omicron. Maybe Omicron to Omicron is 15, again, three years or more. But what is that severity protection from vaccine? How long will that be? And that should not have been a difficult thing for us to produce because the vaccine started in December of 2020. So we have 21, now 22, we have 17, 18 months in there, or actually 19 months. We could have that data, that data is missing. Then vaccine and reinfection, incidence of long COVID and protection from long COVID. So that what long COVID protection does the vaccine offer versus what long COVID protection the infection offers. So I discussed what vaccine offers, 
but I do not have data for a person who was infected before, then got reinfected. What are the chances for long COVID? Then the question that do chances of long COVID increase when the vaccine effectiveness reduce? So vaccines wane and their effectiveness reduce, correct? If that happens, will that 15% help, 15% re reduction in risk of long COVID that vaccines offer, will that wane as well? Or will that stay like it stays for severe protection for severe stays? Then mortality and morbidity in vaccinated versus unvaccinated by age and comorbidities. I think that the biggest issue with the data, which now it seems to me that it is deliberate, I used to think they just do not have this data correctly available, is data by comorbidities and age. For example, somebody who's becoming severe, what comorbidities, even, even the at the younger age, vaccinated or not vaccinated, that is usually missing. And I think that is a very important indicator to actually understand that a person would have what kind of outcome. So this is the data. This is the study. I hope it makes sense. Um, How about we do this? If I get 10,000 likes on this one, I will go try to find some answers to the first infection and what happens. But tell me, did you like this discussion? So M. Gregory says, what is the mechanism of action of national immunity for the Spanish flu, which seems to last for decades? Actually, uh, it's the same thing, memory B cells that would go and live in the bone marrow. Uh, actually, I had uh, discussed this in the past, that even for SARS-CoV or coronaviruses, the T cell immunity can last up to 10 years. And I had discussed for SARS-CoV-2 a study where I showed that after the infection, the memory B cells go and live in the bone marrow where they can live forever. I had done these discussions. It's just that mainstream medical facilities and, and medical information systems do not want to acknowledge or promote them. These are studies, these are data points, and they have to acknowledge and recognize them. They just do not discuss them or take them into account because these data points run counter to their intents. So John says, this is an eye-opening presentation. Awesome, yet again, thank you very much. So in the closing, there is a link in the description of this video, which is for Dr. Bean plan. If you wanted to have access to drbean.com, where there are 900 more lectures, premium, good lectures, medical lectures, and lesser than $97, then take advantage of that. There are more links in there if you would like to support this work by buying me a coffee or using PayPal or Substack or Patreon. Or now today I added the link for locals as well. Okay, so let's have a couple of more questions and then we stop. I saw a question from Doug. Did this question scroll up? So Doug says, shave your head. <laughs> no, I would do the study on the first ever infection that occurs nowadays in the cohorts and what kind of severity is there. Yes, once we have 600,000 subscribers, which we are about 22,000 away. So if you hit subscribe and 22,000 subscriptions, once we hit 600,000, Lisu, who is a cool bean, had suggested that I dye my hair blue. So I will dye my hair blue and offer a lecture when we hit 600,000 subscribers. When we hit 10,000 likes, then I would do this re first infection and the severity of that. How about that? So Lance says, do you think young old people who have not been infected plus not vaccinated 
are at any more risk what do you think so let's talk about that in the next next talk uh, because it's a longer discussion i want to close this lecture 35 minutes is i think good enough let's join the chit chat on dr beans or cool beans cafe live channel and we'll answer some of these questions there thank you very much please like subscribe and share bye bye for now